All right, and we're back with some more dagger falling. So we escape privateers hold. I'm standing on top of it. So I'm going to explain a few things. Things like this are dungeon entrances. Now, you're probably thinking, Seth, this looks pretty weird. I like this, though. Good, you should. So I have my map set to V, and we can open up the big fucking world map. This game is infamous for the fact that it's a massive, massive world, okay? So right here in this area up here, this is actually what's known as uh, Hammerfell. Or sorry, no, sorry, High Rock. And then below that is Hammerfell. This is where Red Guards, or Regatta, are from. Um, the area this is encompassing is called the Iliac Bay. Um, and we're right now in Daggerfall Province. So that should clear it up. So, like, the further inland you'd go through, like, down here near the Dragon Tail Mountains, that is where you start to get into Cyrodiil, which is where Oblivion takes place. You get the idea. Now... I have to clear up this very, 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 very commonly unresearched statement. Daggerfall is not like Minecraft in that it's procedurally generated. I've heard so many people say that, and they don't know what they're talking about, and I hate to sound like that guy, but I'm going to tell you how this works. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> let me clear my throat before I get angry. See this? This is the province of Daggerfall. We... We're right here, in Privateer's Hold, right? Privateer's Hold is a dungeon. This is what's known as, quote-unquote, a quest dungeon. Um, so these red dots right here, like... This is where we're going to go, the Gerhardt Vaults. This is what's known as a, quote-unquote, cemetery, or a temple, whatever you want to call it. Like, usually they're called graveyards or cemeteries. These are procedurally generated, but... They were procedurally generated when the game was created. The same thing with all these things right here. So, all these things were generated in 1996. They're not generated when you play the game. This is what really gets on my nerves for some reason. But it's true. Um, there's no... Oh, the whole game is random. Everything's random. No. The whole game was crafted, and then it was using modular generation to create the other things. So... We can also go to Wayrest over here. There's tons of stuff here. Like the extra side dungeons, the covens, all that was randomly generated by an algorithm. But everything that's a main quest or main city, like we can type in Daggerfall. Um, so Daggerfall is a handcrafted city. The buildings inside, like the shops, all that, those were just generated and then put in. They're not generated when you play the game. They're generated ages ago, <laughs> so... However, there is some differences to that as well. So if we go into Privateer's Hold, over and over, it's the same exact stuff, right? It's always going to be the exact same enemies every time you play the game. We go into, say, a laboratory uh, dungeon type, which is a random dungeon type. Um, the enemies will technically be randomized from a pool that it draws from, like, a seed. So, like, you'll, like, a laboratory you'll usually find undead, or... Actually, generally, it tends to be, like, Atronach, so magical, undead, or dangerous, stuff like that. Um, so, like, if there's a dungeon that has a seed for animals, which is, I think, there's things like Spider Cave, right? It'll generate generally from that pool of creatures. Now... This is another thing, too. So all things in this game are static. So a Daedra Lord is level, like, what, 10, 12, whatever. Imps level 3, rats level 1. This is not like in Skyrim and Oblivion where enemies will scale with you. The only things that scale with your character in this game are the humanoid enemies that spawn in dungeons, like the burglar, the archer. Um, those enemies, those do scale with you. So if you're level 10, they're level 10. But there's instances in the game where you can go into a dungeon and there's all of a sudden, like, fucking insane enemies in there. Like, ancient liches or something, right? Don't do that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really bad time. Um, so there is some things you need to know that you have to deal with. But I'll explain more of that as we get going. So 
Daggerfall Unity obviously increased the draw distance. Now, if we go over here, so right now we're at Privateer's Hole. That's a square on the map grid. We're going to go south, and I'll explain how this works. So in Vanilla Daggerfall, this generation just didn't happen. Um, it was actually very flat and kind of odd and lumpy. But Daggerfall Unity did seam it out. I'm only going to do this one time to demonstrate how this can work. <clears throat> so if we look at our map, we can see that we're in Daggerfall, and if we're going south, we're eventually going to hit Gothway Garden. This is a very common like knowledge thing to most players, but I'll show it off anyways. And then the music kicks in. Cool. That was that was really unexpected. So yeah, if we go through here, we're technically right now in the wilderness. The game considers wilderness this section of the game. So if I rest and let's actually save first and I rest until I'm healed, I might spawn an enemy. Yep, I figured as such. Probably a centaur, yeah. So centaurs are pretty low. I think they're like level five or something. Let's go ahead and kill him. Silver broad. We already have an elven one. Look, nah, we're fine. Look at that. That is exactly, and I'm sure there's mods that actually allow the view distance to get bigger, but this is what the whole game looks like to us who played it forever. So there's also mods that let you um, spawn random enemy packs in the wilderness when you're walking. It's pretty cool. There's also in real time fast travel you can do as well. There's mods like there's tons of mods for this game. So I'm also just doing this to increase my jumping skill and my running skill as well. Just to show off how the wild looks. You can find dungeons doing this. Um, you can find witch covens if you know where they're at, but we'll talk about those later. So what's that on the horizon? Why, it's Gothway fucking gardens. Damn right. So, this is a town. Pretty self-explanatory, right? So you're probably like, why do you have this, like, hard on for this game? Look at this. This is a town, man. There's NPCs walking around. There's, like, fucking buildings all over the place. Signage. It's all kind of proc gen, but you know what? It's still really impressive. It really adds to the atmosphere of this whole game, and I absolutely love it. Um, I'm gonna check and see if the music's too loud. One second. Yeah, I just turned the music down a tiny bit. So, this is an NPC. Look at his gross ass hands. But, you know, so we can talk to this guy and we can have different tones, like we can be polite, blunt, whatever. This is all based on etiquette. So, NPCs give you as much information as they know. So, and also to that region. So if we say, hey, where's a bank? He says, the best way is awfully close by. He marked it on your map, right? So he knows where the bank is. Every time, if an NPC says, it's south of here, it's north of here. If you keep clicking this, like that, you can see that they'll eventually just show it on your map. That's how you can tell if an NPC knows where something's at. Let's see if he knows where a general store is. He says, oh, it's southeast. And then we can just keep doing this points on your map. So what about here? Oh, okay, he actually does know where a lot of shit is. So let's say about tavern. Oh, damn it. Well, it doesn't matter. He knows too much. Um, so that sucks, I guess. But so if we go into our map now, we can see this is the entire town. So that little L-shaped dick block thing, that's actually like a decoration. Um, that square that's blue should be a mage's guild, I'm pretty sure. The fighter's guild should be down to myself. And I think that's the Temple of Kinnereth in each corner. And those green spots are taverns, and then there's a bank. There's like a supply store. So we can also go into information mode, or this. We can also see buildings and click on them from a distance and see what they are. So you can also talk to people like this too. Um, so let's go ahead and go into this general store. Um, we're not really on a quest timer just yet, but we'll go into here. So this is another thing this game has. So incense and soft music soothes your nerves as you cross the threshold. This means this will always be a good store. The things in here will always be of high quality and they will actually buy for less and sell for more. So what we want to do is we need to find a little bit of a cheaper store. Let's try this one. 
and it should be practical. This is the medium one. We'll explain more of this later. So what we want to do is... Well, I already know what he is. Sell my items. I'm not going to sell this just yet. I'll sell that book, though. That's a pretty good chunk. So your mercantile skill will say 654 hit sell, but it's actually 214. Um, that's very normal. Um, what else? Can I even afford anything? How much gold do I have? I probably don't have very much. 585, is that correct? Yeah, I don't really have very much right now. How much is a cart? Oh, I thought it was more. So first things first, let's buy a cart. Not steal, by the way. Buy. He'll barter it down based on your skill. And we'll say yes. We don't need the horse. The horse actually comes with the cart. So... This is essential to playing Daggerfall. So if we go into here, we can also change our transport. It's so cute! This actually restores your... Or sorry, it doesn't restore, but it keeps your stamina in check. So in towns, you can't... I'm going to just do this one more time, just a little bit, because I don't want it to be too, too loud. Um, so the red bars are stamina, green bars are health. If you have low stamina, your character will just pass out and then you can die. It's very dangerous, and then you get fined for loitering. So if we go to rest in town, it's actually illegal to sleep because it's technically like you're just sleeping on the ground. Um, loitering you can only do for three hours maximum at a time. You can also change this in the I and I, I think. But um, yeah, this is another way of passing time because sometimes shops won't be open. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, so we have our cart. First things first, I'm actually gonna go and join the Mages Guild. I can't really make much use out of it right this second. I'm just going to join the guild and see if I can do it. So in this game, you cannot join every single guild. Uh, guilds have very specific things they require. Like, if you want to join the Mages Guild, you have to have a very specific uh, type of stats. Mainly magic based, obviously. So let's go ahead and go in here and we'll talk to him. Can I join guild? Yes, you are worthy to join the Mages Guild. As an apprentice, you can use the Spellmaker, get training in guild skills, later you become eligible to use the library, buy magic, and make your own. Yeah! You are Shriaki, apprentice of the Mages Guild. So, cool. That's a main, like, thing most characters will want to do. If only just to access the uh, Spellcrafter. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to do it because, goddamn, why not? Um, so this is a mage's guild hall. There's a lot of stuff in here. This guy will make magic items. Sometimes the NPCs are slightly different, but I actually know this layout. This is a spell merchant. I don't think I can buy anything from him right now. I don't even have the gold to deal with it. Um, and then over here, this is a library if you want to read. I know, shocking, right? This is just an empty decor, and I think this one also is too. Yeah, it's a little place you smoke your pot. Um, you smoke pot drugs in there. This is the cleavage spell Spellmaker. Very, very, very useful. Um, that is one of the most useful things in the game. I think this is the, yeah, buying magic items if you don't want to make them yourself. There is a lot to learn in Daggerfall, and you're always going to love this game when you walk away from it after a while. And then this is the ID character. Um, magic items can spawn. You don't know what they do unless you deduce it yourself. Just don't do it. It's like a like net hack. Just don't do it uh, unless you know what it is. Training. This works like training in all other Elder Scrolls games pretty much. Um, he's making some crystal meth, so I'm just going to leave him alone. And of course we can get quests from him as well. This guy right here is a quest giver and receiver. We can go upstairs. Fucking Daedra summoning. We'll talk about that later. Um, this should be the teleporter. This is kind of like in Morrowind if you've played that. This just lets you teleport to random places without passaging of time. Very useful, um, but not essential. And then of course, this is actually a texture to go outside. Um, I think this was new to Unity, but I don't think you could do that in the original. It would just respawn you like outside, like right here. So yeah, that's how guild halls work. We're also going to go and go to the... Well, I don't want to join... I think it's Kinnereth is this temple. I'm not sure. We'll just go south and keep talking. So, you can also kill NPCs, by the way. If you talk to an NPC with your weapon drawn, it also lowers their reputation. And also, this is how climbing works. It's kind of derpy. You just kind of hold into the wall. 
like I'm just holding W right now, and eventually you'll activate climbing mode, and your character's skill determines if they grab on or not. And you can do some pretty cool shit with this if you're careful. Um, God damn, I love this game. This is all just decor. We'll talk about this shit way later in the game. Um, so, yeah. As you can see, there's also residences here. There's another quality shop. What do I have in my inventory, actually? Just some alchemical stuff, actually. So, we have a wagon now. This has 750 pounds worth of shit you can put in it, including your gold. So let's go ahead and put our gym jams in there. How much gold do I have? 370. We'll just keep that on us right now. It used to be if you put this in there, by the way, if you put the stupid cart in there, it would used to, like, cause an entire universal fucking collapse in old Daggerfall. Thankfully, that doesn't happen here. So that right there is the Fighter's Guild. Most guilds have the same kind of structure. You can usually tell what they are. We're actually going to go in here. Can I join them? I think I should be able to. And no, this isn't the... Get... There he is. Join guild. Yay, we can join. So one of the benefits of being in the Fighter's Guild is you can do repairs on items, training on stats, obviously. Um, and if we go over here, we can also talk to this guy for information. I have places to be. Well, I'm so sorry. I am just so fucking sorry. Anyways, so this is a quest giver and receiver. Um, you can get quests from them. If you're in the Fighter's Guild, it's free lodging, so do it. Um, as you can see, though, it's gotten dark. That means the NPCs are probably gone. No, they're still here for a little bit longer. So this is essentially free room, which is nice. And now it's nighttime, which I can explain a bit of things to. So nighttime kind of sucks in general because NPCs won't be on the streets, but... We can also break into houses if we want to. So if I go over to... I'll just demonstrate it. If I can do it. I'm only going to do this right now for fun. I'm not really going to try to cheese it right now, like later. Let's go to the supply store. Where was that? Uh, so in Old Daggerfall... Here it is. Oh, it's still open. Shit, never mind. Let's, let's loiter for a little bit longer then. Oh, they're still open? Oh, hell. Everything's still open except the bank. Either ways, in old Daggerfall, you used to just be able to cast open spells on these, and they'd open instantly. It wasn't programmed correctly. In this version, you have to do it a little bit more smartly, I guess. Um, but I'll, I'll also demonstrate how taverns work. There should be... Well, let's see. The banks... Banks I'll explain later, but it's pretty much gold does weigh you down in this game. Um, one thing that sucks about that is you have to kind of pick and choose when you drop stuff off, but you can use your wagon as well. I'm not sure if you could use the wagon to deposit gold in the original, but it doesn't matter. I use it in this a lot. So, this is an inn. Um, you can tell by these specific buildings. Happy go lucky music. So these are all NPCs you can just talk to if you want to. Look at this guy's fucking Neanderthal face. Um, these NPCs can just give you information on, like, other areas, stuff like that. Um, sometimes they can also give you quests. This is the innkeeper. He'll actually let you have a room. Um, there's a quest NPC. I'm just going to say no. So there's that. You can also rent out rooms. Um... If you rent a room out, you have a certain amount of time with it. But if you're in the Knights of, I think, the Dragon, which is Daggerfall's knightly order, you can only be in one knightly order, by the way. They're like Fighter's Guild, basically. Um, if you're a knight of that order, all inns, I think, in just Daggerfall are free. I think once you reach, like, a high enough rank, eventually they're all free all over the Iliac Bay. But uh, this is technically a missing feature. These are actually called the prostitute class. Um, so all these NPCs actually operate from a class table. So let's see if I can find some more. Like, see, yeah, these would be in the... Oh, they can also give you quests, too. I'm not going to do that. Too bad. I know. Um, 
So where else? Like, these rooms, they're just random. When you rent a room out, you just rest and you just spawn in one of these. So, a good example is these would be common NPCs. Nobles are going to be in, like, palace structures. Then there's the nobility of the actual area. And they all have different reputation factors that determine how NPCs talk to you, what kind of quests you can get, stuff like that. I'm actually going to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. All right, much, much better. So yeah, you're probably just thinking now, Seth, what the hell? There's no main quest marker bubbling over my head, yelling at me, telling me what the fuck to do. You're right. If I hit my log button, you can see I just have some vague information about what my actual quest is. If I actually, here's another thing you can do too. So if I say, uh, guild, mage's guild, could be anywhere. By the way, he doesn't know where it's at. I could actually say copy to logbook. I can go to my notebook. And it should be there, I think, right? No, I guess it's... Yeah, there we go. Wish I knew could be anywhere. So, yeah. Um, right now, we're just waiting to get a letter from Lady Bree Sienna. And, uh, but... I'm not just gonna stand here with my fucking, you know, ding-dangs hanging out, okay? No, we're gonna... We're gonna actually do something, okay? Um, what we need to do is we need to eventually dungeon crawl this game you cannot get around it you're gonna dungeon crawl whether you want to or not so we need some money because we need to get some spells so what we need to do is first things first we're gonna go ahead and take all these options off here and we're gonna go down to i believe it's the gerhardt vault we're gonna just tr so also i haven't mentioned traveling so if you have a horse which I do, technically, but we'll buy one for realsies later. This is a huge part of Daggerfall. A lot of Daggerfall is based on time. Um, some quests are timed in the main quest, not very many, and it's usually pretty lenient. But when you're doing guild quests, holy shit, dude. Sometimes it, it can be like a seven-day time limit, and you have to go to a random dungeon, and it's like, oh, fuck. So, time is of the essence. Cautiously, this just means that you're going to get there while in a longer time you actually regenerate your stamina, your magicka, all that. Recklessly, you don't regenerate anything. Um, this is pretty important in some aspects, but it depends. There's ways to cheese this as well, which I'll show later. So foot slash horse, this is also generally slower. Ship, what ship means, and I'll show you what I mean, because it's, it's kind of hard to explain. You're probably like, ship, what the hell are you talking about? So if we're over here in Sentinel, and then we use ship, we can go to Daggerfall really fast. If you go on foot, you don't just go fucking walking through the water. No, your character will walk all the way around the entirety of the province, so it eats up a lot of time. <clears throat> of course, it does have some traveling cost, but... It's better to do that. Also, you can invest in a ship to where it's free, but we'll get into that later. So, if we go stop at nights for inns, that means we're always going to be safe. We won't have random encounters. Camping out is free, but there's a chance of random encounters. Also, camping out tends to take longer. Um, so, we're just going to go recklessly. We'll camp out. We'll, we'll use inns, and we're going to go to this dungeon here. So, also, a low ghostly moan, and you smell freshly buried dead. So, what does that mean? There's a lot of flavor text in this game, and I'm going to do my best to explain it. There's actually a list you can find on UESP Wiki, but the most part is, when an NPC type is in that dungeon, it will say around the dungeon. So, like, it says, you smell freshly buried earth. It's just going to be a cemetery, and you're always going to find... Um, Rats, bats, and a few humanoids. Maybe an orc at higher levels. Um, also, orcs weren't playable in this game yet. But they are in it, trust me. We'll get into that later. Um, so, like, if it says the ground starts to vibrate, that means there's magic creatures, right? If it says you see cobwebs, that means it's a spider dungeon. If you see, like, there are many leg tracks all over the place... That usually means Scorpion Dungeon, or it says the air around here is hot. That means it's a Dragonling Dungeon. There's a lot of little, like, subtle things you can find out before, but usually smelling fresh buried earth 
also implies you're going to fight undead. So that is pretty fucking scary. But we're not worried about that, right? We're worried about this. So if I did this correctly, which I really hope I did, it's a small dungeon, and I'll show you what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and save at dungeon start. Go in here, draw our weapon out. And I think I did this correctly. Yep, this is exactly where I want to be. So we're going to take all these doodads. Now you're probably like, Seth, what the hell? How'd you know this was here? I've played Daggerfall for over a decade, and I finished the game three times fully, and I've started and stopped it at least a hundred. So activate that coffin. Boom. This is a secret area. And here we have our gold. More gold. Now, you're probably just like, how did you know this was here? Because, like I said, the game was not actually generated randomly when I started the game. The way the proc gen actually works is... It's basically... It's weird. Like I said, all this was generated before the game came out. Like, in, in like stores. So all this is static. If you know where something is, like let's say a witch coven, which I sadly don't. Um, witch covens I'll talk about way later. You don't need to worry about that right this very second. But I'm, I'm sure I've already piqued enough curiosity just in terms of um, some of the stuff I've talked about already, right? So what am I doing right now? What I'm doing, and we found a map. I'm doing this kind of quickly, but don't worry about it. Um, what I'm doing right now, just getting a couple of skills. This is not essential, but this is a very, very safe uh, and practical way of doing this. Also, if you've played Daggerfall for years and wondered, I killed all the enemies, what the fuck is it talking about not safe? TCL, I will show you. So... These are other modules, like I couldn't rest right there because, guess what, there's a bat. All of these are, are procedurally generated dungeon modules that could potentially exist and they have to connect to each other. If this was a real dungeon, this module would connect to this and then it would connect to that, like that. So this is when people say it was procedurally generated, this is what they mean. And it really is modular. Um, that's why enemies will say they're there even though you've cleared the dungeon itself. So this is why, and you can see they actually can clip through things sometimes. Oh, Framped, be quiet. Um, so we'll go over here and just do this a couple more times. So what am I going to do in here f anyways? So what I'm trying to do, just getting a couple of combat like stats up, you know. We're just trying to get some gold. I need to kind of not die. So, uh, this is what's so scary. Yeah, that's fine. I I really should have rested first. Um, pardon the cat. He's being awful. He's he's in a really weird place lately. He just wants to go outside all the time. And I'm like, no, it's like four degrees outside, dude. So, that death was fine. I really shouldn't have went in there with this low of health. But I also don't have any spells yet. So, what am I doing in this dungeon essentially right now? Well, yeah, this is grinding, if you will. But you'll notice, every time I go in the dungeon, the loot piles will randomly generate. But they'll always be in the same static positions. All these areas, they will always spawn. I will always have these two treasure chests in here. I'll always have two bats. I'll always have that secret. I'll always have that. And there's always this. So... This is why I say it is so important to know what dungeons you can actually take on. I mean, you can generally, you could technically go back to Privateer's Hold and grind through it a few times, but I don't really need to do that. This dungeon doesn't have any humanoid NPCs in it. There's some that are, like, going to spawn with humanoids every time. Like, you'll get, like, an orc... Um, usually a lower tier orc or like a barbarian. Framped, come here. Stop being so whiny. Um, and then, you know, a few animals usually, right? So these kinds of dungeons are essential to starting off in Daggerfall. Only for a few reasons, and I'll explain why in a second. Number one, we ain't got no gold. <laughs> I think that should be pretty obvious. We don't have any gold. We can't train magic. We can't, you know, do much in way of actually training anything but basically jumping in Longblade. 
So I'm not going to do this for very long. I actually don't need to do this for very long either because A, it's boring and B, it's unnecessary. I'm just trying to get as much until I I can at least fill my inventory. Um, not the cart. God, that, it would take like fucking four hours to do this with a cart. I've done it before. It's not necessary and sometimes it's actually very dumb to do those kinds of things because A, just because you don't technically have the enemies scale to you except human, um, you don't want to do that. It's very dangerous to over-level. It's also dangerous to under-level. So, be very careful. Um, in general, I'd say I kind of want to get at least a level out of here as well. That would be my preferred method. I'm only going to do this, like I said, until my inventory is full, and then we're going to do the next phase before the main quest kicks in. So the main quest at this point is active, it's just on a timer. So eventually we're going to get a letter, like I said, from Lady Brisiena. She's a member of the Blades, which is... Well, if you don't know, I'm not going to spoil it right this minute, so... You can probably infer, but you know, it's still... Um, so there's something also different about dungeons and towns. So in towns, those little crates that I've been passing in that room every time, those are actually different. So if I go into like a person's house, like I break into their house and then I, I steal all their shit, right? Um, <laughs> what that is at that point is that's where you're going to get your thieving loot from. And there's sometimes little piles on the ground. Sometimes temples can have them spawn like that. But what I'm doing right now is getting myself established because I want to get... Oh, there's also a Khajiit suit. If you want to be a furry, you can do that. <laughs> so, you can play as a Khajiit in this game, I forgot to mention. You've always been able to play as Khajiits and Argonians, I think, since the beginning. Um, they're still... I don't think there's any in this area, but it makes total sense. Because this entire area is basically consisting of Bretons and uh, Red Guards. With a few Dark Elves, but that's a different story. Um, there's also Orcs, but like I said, I'll get into that later. Um, so you're probably like, this seems like it's really boring. It's not necessarily boring to me, because I'm crazy. I might just stop doing this after a few minutes, and we're going to just do the uh, like next step I have in plan for the video. Because, number one, the main quest is what I'm going to be doing in this playthrough. But, of course, I'm going to show gilding and uh, stuff like that. I want to join a temple, which is something I've never done before, because you can access potion crafting. If you want, at this point, you can also generate the Thieves quest thing by pickpocketing NPCs. You can also kill three, I think, innocent NPCs, and you can also generate your Dark Brotherhood startup. There's a lot of stuff in this game. I'd like to level up, personally, because you do need to level up. I haven't even mentioned that yet. Um, so in Daggerfall, a lot of the quests are actually locked behind level requirements. So by the end of the game, I believe the highest level you have to be to beat the entirety of the main quest is level 10. And we need to be at least level 5 for some other stuff. But trust me, you'll level up really quickly in the big dungeons. These little pissy dungeons... These are not going to be... When people say Daggerfall has huge dungeons, this is not what they're talking about, by the way. Um, like, when you're doing the big dungeons, you're going to be skill-checking more often. There's going to be more combat. There's going to be more loot. Um, these are just basically to make your character get started. Because if you go into a big dungeon right now, you're going to get killed. And I mean, it's going to take, like, three seconds. You're going to get turned around. You're going to have no idea what the hell you're doing. Um, and then you're probably going to die. So that's something that you don't want to do. Leather? No, I don't need that. So also, there's differences in types of shields. Like, leather shield does give you... Sorry, not leather, but like, bucklers give you less armor, but they're lighter. Um, whereas larger shields, like this, they give you more shield, obviously. Like, more defense rating. But they can also be used um, for enchanting to make better items. So we're actually pretty close to kind of capping out here. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, we'll rest. Why not? Pretty close to leveling, I'd hope. But that's all right. 
I'm not going to cry if I don't. I probably need to level up some of the other smaller skills I have, too. Doesn't really matter. So we're not going to go to the wagon, but we're going to go outside. We're going to save. And here is where we make our final battle. Um, no, not really. So we're going to go... What's the closest town to here? Uh, not homes. Let's do towns. Um, and right-clicking just zooms in, by the way. We'll go to the Lucky Inn. That sounds like a grand old time. So, these things, by the way, when they say Lucky Guard Inn, it's actually an entire, like, hamlet, basically. You can see what I mean. The tavern is the main focus, but this is the idea. So, hey, sexy lay day. Let's go into Tell Me About Regional. And what I want to do is I want to bank. Kafton. We'll go to Kafton, then. That might be our home. We'll see how it works. Also, this is new. If you fuck up or you don't know the entire thing, you can just type it in, and this actually helps fill it out. The original was 100% strict. You had to do it no fucking around. It had to be perfect. So, yay! Reaching into your pack for something to eat, you spy a note. It wasn't there before. This is... Yeah, this is the main quest. So... Go ahead and use it. Dear... Shriaki, I heard about your accident at sea and feared the worst. Now that I've heard you're alive and well, I would like the opportunity to meet with you and discuss our beloved Emperor's mission in the Iliac Bay. Beloved. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Lady Magnuson, the Emperor's agent at the Court of Daggerfall. My position is not so official as an ambassador. None but other agents of the Emperor know of my true affiliation. The Iliac Bay is rife with rebels against the Imperial Throne, so your discretion is required. For the purpose of our meeting, I will be taking a room at an inn, the Laughing Fairy, in the Beaver and Dagger Hostel of Daggerfall for a month. After that, I will no longer be available. I expect you ASAP. Yours serious, seriously? Yours sincerely, Brisiana Lady Magnuson. So, this is the main quest. You can also tell because it's green. These are quest items. So... We'll come back to this later, but we'll say this is... Well, we'll look at it. Yeah, that's cute, but there's no guilds, so I'm not really going to use this one. I already forgot the name of the area she was in. <laughs> so we'll go to use again. The Laughing Fairy. Okay, that's what it's called. No, that's not it. That's the uh, actual area. The Beaver and Dagger Hostel. That's where we need to be. I know it's hotel, but whatever. Uh, the Beaver and Dagger Hostel. See, this is a thing that confuses a lot of players, and it's understandable. We'll go recklessly just to save time. And as you can see, there's only two places here. Sometimes they can be the exact same name. I've had that happen in a few main quests. So, Laughing Fairy. And there's one more. The Thirsty Helm. Okay, so we know where it is. And so this is required, by the way, for the main quest. This is what Lady Brisiana always looks like. Ah, thank you for responding to my letter, Shriaki. I am Lady Brisiana. Let me bring you to date on affairs. The specter of King Lysandus haunts the streets of Daggerfall at night. Trying to communicate with him is futile. He will occasionally moan the word, VENGEANCE! But that is the only coherent word I have ever heard him utter. If you are ever in Daggerfall, do not wander the city at night. That's no fucking joke. You are certain to be attacked by his legion of ghosts. It would be probably more gainful to investigate those who might have wronged Lysandus to find the cause behind his torment. I do not know if the royal family of Daggerfall or another person or persons merit more suspicion. I wonder if it's Wayrest. The major powers of the Bay, Sentinel, Wayrest, and Daggerfall may be good places to start. In the matter of the letter, the Emperor's agent says that he was unable to hand deliver it to the Queen because of the war. He hired a courier who supposedly delivered the letter to his steed. Oh, sorry, in his steed. We do not know the name of this courier. Obviously, there is little information of use, but it would be worthwhile to see whether the letter arrived at Castle Daggerfall at all. How you decide to do this is entirely your decision. I will contact you in any new and if any new information should surface. I'm leaving Daggerfall soon. My position here has been compromised and my life is in danger. Probably that dude over there in the corner. Do not mention my name in court, <laughs> so you know it's serious. It is more likely to hurt than help. Good luck and watch your back, Shriraki. 
I'm gonna fuck her name up every time I say it. So this means we have officially started the main quest. There's no longer a time limit. This is one of the few times this ever happens. So let's go ahead and back it up. And I think we'll find a town. That's what we'll do, then we'll call it. No, I don't need your damn job. Probably would have been easy too. Well met, stranger. Let's go to a bank again. No, I'll forget how to type that. Alding Wall. I like that name. We'll go with it. I can actually kind of remember it, so let's see how that town looks like. Alding Wall. I'm not really worried. I have plenty of gold. Uh, of course, it's fucking foggy as shit. Ah, oh, hell. So how does this one look? Yes, this is exactly what we want. Lots of taverns, it's got a nice little shop circle, and it looks like we have a Fighter's Guild, Mage's Guild, the Temple, and I don't know what that other one is. So let's go ahead and look around first. This is what we're going to call our home. So let's see what we got. We have an Armorer. Do we have a Pawn Shop? Yes, we even have a Pawn Shop. Perfect. How about an Alchemist? Yep. Uh, banks. There's two banks, actually. Let's have him mark that. Yeah, he doesn't know where it is. No reason to talk down to me. I'm not even paying attention to the, the listing here. Um, guilds. So they have Fighter's Guild, Mage's Guild. A Knight of the Dragon. Badass. Awesome. That's actually beneficial to join just out of principle. Also, I haven't mentioned this yet, but yes, your reputation does degrade over time. Um, so what ends up happening is if you go too long not doing quests for a guild... They will actually ignore you, um, and you'll kind of lose rank. It's really kind of brutal. So, and yes, it takes a very, very long time to get um, into, like, Archmage or something. It's very hard. And it's like in Morrowind where you have to have specific stats. Um, because if you don't, it's going to suck ass, trust me. The Laughing Giant. I don't know what my favorite proc gen name I've ever read is. It's pretty hard to... It's like the dirty... The dirty skewer or something just fucking broke me. Or the dirty mug, I think, was one of them that just got me. Um, so these are usually what I like to call uh, merchant's circle. So we have an armory. Oh, perfect. This is even better. So this is a bank. I'll show off how this works real quick. You can also talk to these, but these are the nobility, so he's not going to talk talk to me. So we have gold in our inventory weighing us down. We have 3k, so let's go ahead and deposit 3708, and we'll withdraw about 100. Trust me, you're going to get a lot. And then withdraw about 3508. That's probably fine. Um, yes, you can take out loans, and you can repay them. Yes, you can go to provinces, take out money, and skip town and say fuck it and never come back. That's totally doable. <laughs> I'm not even making that up. Um, if you want to buy a house, look how much gold they are, by the way. Uh, it's pretty fucking steep. Um, but yeah, you can also get mods that let you place things, kind of like the old mod for Oblivion that let you... Uh, shop at like a specific place in Imperial City, then place the items in your home. There's a mod that lets you do that. Um, I don't have it in right now, but yeah, you can buy houses. It's yours. You will always have free lodging, obviously, and you can drop things in there and they don't disappear. In original Daggerfall, it didn't work. They would actually disappear if you dropped it in like containers and stuff. It was fucking awful. So they were just useless. Um, ships. This isn't a port town. City Daggerfall City is actually a port town, so you can buy a ship in there. I think they vary from 100,000 to 250,000, I think. And you can also only own one ship at a time, and you can sell them, obviously, and get money back and do stuff like that. Ships are better than houses because, A, they are free ship cost, and they also are free storage. So it's dependent about um, what you want, but we're probably going to go for a ship first. Um, but now that we have letters of credit... Um, let's go ahead and see what we got in this town before we actually end the video, because I want to make this my home, don't you know? I may have already forgotten where we're at, <laughs> but, you know. 
Um, and I just want to see what else we've got going on in here because I really do want to use this. We have two banks. And yeah, that's possible. Sometimes you can get banks next to banks. This is... Oh, like, look at that right there, actually. There's two banks next to each other. Um, that can happen in proc gen. It's just the way things are. Like I said, this is not random. Um, the game generated this over 20 years ago. Um, if you go to this town right now, all these things are going to be the same for you. So if you want to, that's why players know where things are at, is because they've... They've probably suffered and just went through it. So palaces, these are used a lot in main quests. There's one main quest that requires a specific palace to go into. Not like Castle Daggerfall, Castle Wayrest. Those are totally different. Um, general store. Let's see what they are. Practical matter. Actually, let's sell because, because, before I forget about it. Um, I don't need these. And that's fine. We'll sell that. Tell your friends you cheated me. One of my favorite dialogues. Um, so this is a temple of Kinnereth, is that correct? I don't want to join Silver Chasm. Huh. Well, I've seen a couple of those in my time. I've made a couple of them too, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, yeah, Temple of Kinnereth. I'll show off temples because they are kind of interesting. So temples are dependent on deities. They're technically a guild. So if we go in here, where the hell is the entrance? One problem with proc gen, you have no idea where entrances are usually going to spawn. There's sometimes indicators of where they are, but... Oh, it's right there. So, you can see they have like guild dudes like these. I despise your kind. Usually if you're in the mages guild, they have opposition, by the way. Um, you can donate. I'm not sure what that does. But yeah, you can donate them. They also have statues to the things. Curing diseases, by the way, these are always free. Um, sometimes, like, other things will happen, like holidays and shit. You can also buy spells. This is just an NPC. Trainers. They're all different skills, of course. I think this guy is a spell maker. That's the quest giver. There's usually doodad. This is a quest location, but I'll talk about those later. Um... What else? There's the Daedra Summoner with his hot babes. And uh, Daedra Summoning, I'm not going to talk about for a long time. These don't do anything. Th these, yeah, these. They don't do anything. They just are like NPCs to look at. Um, what else? Oh, let's join that... Uh, I think there's a Fighter's Guild here and there's a, temp a dragon. Because if I go to that Temple of the Dra Sorry, Knights of the Dragon, I can actually... I mean, I don't have any real reason to do those quests. They can lead up to, I think, finding artifacts. So if you've ever played, like, Morrowind or Oblivion, um, and you've seen, like, Sanguine's Rose, there is those items in the game. Um, there's also things like the Warlock's Amulet. You know, classic Elder Scroll items. They, they make their appearance here. If you can think of it, it's probably in here. Like the Wabajack, it does exactly what you think. Um, and you'd be amazed how much modern Elder Scrolls comes from this game, especially the lore, <clears throat> um, which I'll talk about later if I have time. But, so, also I forgot to mention, you can only buy houses in areas that have banks. Um, same with ships, you can only buy ships in those areas. Knights of the Dragon, can I join? I don't think I can, but I'll give it a shot. No. Nice, nice coif. Um, post coifus. Oh, nice, nice sideburns. Yeah, sure. Cool. Consider yourself one of the Knights of the Dragon. Cool. We're just joining that for, like, the free guilds, but. Aldingwald, is that where we're at? I had to think about it. We are in Aldingwald. So, I'll actually call that my home. So. That way, I actually remember it. So, that's it. We're going to call that a video. I'm going to save the game. And we're going to do some questing in a few minutes. So, I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. It's going to get crazy in a few minutes. So, I'll see you then.